Okay, hi everyone. Hopefully you can all hear me. We're going to start this uh, webinar. So, uh, my name is Rory McGregor. I'm the general manager of, of F Track Australia, uh, and joining me is Neil Wilson, uh, who is currently muted. There Hello. he is. How's it all going? Excellent. All right. So uh, Neil is the product manager for CineSync. Uh, he is uh, basically responsible for building CineSync from the ground up. Uh, Neil and I have been with uh, working with CineSync since 2005, 2006. Uh, so roughly 30 years experience between us on this product. Um, so today we're going to show you um, a, a number of things in CineSync, uh, starting with a very quick basic overview for those of you who aren't as familiar with the product. Uh, and then working through a, a number of uh, workflow features and some, some tools and uh, elements of CineSync that you may not be familiar with or you might not have seen before. Uh, and we'll have some time at the end for questions as well. So uh, if there's anything we haven't covered on the way through that you'd like to know more about, uh, we're happy to answer those uh, at the end. Uh, so today we are going to uh, discuss a few elements. So as I said, a quick run through of CineSync. Uh, and some of the, uh, the tools and features that are in there. Um, the advanced features in CineSync Pro uh, and, and running through all those. Uh, some of the uh, integrations we have with other tools. Um, we'll be showing an integration with uh, F-Track, which is a project tracking platform and also um, our parent company these days, uh, as well as um, uh, some other integrations. Um, showing how file transfers can be used within CineSync to make reviews simpler. Um, how we do that securely. Uh, and then we can talk quickly about some of the upcoming features and things that you'll see in CineSync over the next little while. And, uh, and on the way through, we'll show some uh, tips and tricks and, and uh, Easter eggs and a couple of little hidden things that um, not everyone knows is there. So I'm going to hand over to Neil um, to show his screen and uh, he will help drive the, uh, the presentation from here. So this is uh, a CineSync window. Um, can you make that a little bit bigger, Neil, so we can? Yep, great. Um, so CineSync uh, at its core, for those that don't know, is a, a synchronized review and approval system, uh, which allows you to look at multiple, uh, uh, look at video and multiple copies of video in multiple locations at the same time. So. Uh, for Neil and I, we're in different locations. We can share the same video between us, uh, and we can uh, we can synchronise that video so we can uh, look at exactly the same frame at the same time of exactly the same uh, media at the same time. Draw on the screen, make comments, make notes, all in complete sync. Um, and CineSync is designed in such a way that uh, it's not particularly affected by bandwidth, um, so you can run very high quality video without having any lag or loss in the way that you would with a screen sharing or a, um, uh, a streaming application. So to make that work, um, basically we have, um, the, the video is actually on the desk, on the machine at each end. Uh, and we can show you how that works as we go through, but we'll have a, a copy of the video in each location. So the first thing we're gonna do is start the session um, and then we'll add the media and we'll go from there and we'll do a quick run through. So this is, this demo we're going to see a couple of um, options, a couple of um, installations of anything on the same screen, but you just got to assume or imagine that they're in different places. So top left can be the US and bottom right can be Australia. Um, so the owner of the session logs in with the session key, which Neil's just done. And that session key can then be provided to everyone else who joins the review. Um, the session key both identifies the review and it uh, allows a guest access into the review. So as soon as the uh, the guest types that in, they don't need a set, they don't need a, a username or a password. They can just use the session key to join, and then they're in the review. So once they're in, uh, we can add media um, to this review. Now to start with, we're looking just at the basic CineSync functionality, um, and in this situation, um, both participants in the review already have the media um, that they're looking at. So it's just loaded in automatically at both ends. And um, now anything that anyone does in that review um, can be seen by everyone else. So 
if the if the owner moves around, the guest will follow. If the guest moves, the owner follows. Uh, if uh, if one person draws on the screen, then that's seen by both participants in the review. And I might even join this review as well. So we have a um, a third, and it just means that everyone can can interact. Um, and not worry about whether anyone else is seeing what this what they're showing them. It's all very um, simple and obvious and, and a very clear way of being able to have visual communication during a review. So let me just find where I am. Okay. So within uh, within CineSync, we can do a number of things. So at the moment we have uh, a video loaded in, we can also view a bunch of other things. So we could load stills, uh, we could load PDFs. Uh, in CineSync Pro, uh, we can run frame sequences. Um, so EXRs, DPXs, Cineons, things like that. Um, that's one thing we won't show today because um, uh, running frame sequences in screen sharing uh, is not uh, particularly pretty, um, but that's something we can do. Uh, and if you wanna know more, um, please feel free to contact us about that. Um, but we'll run through some of the other uh, features quickly that are in, in basic CineSync. So once we've made a bunch of notes in CineSync and we've kind of uh, talked through all the shots that we want to discuss uh, and, and we've made our annotations, um, and if we've added any um, text notes during this as well, which we can add either for the whole playlist or per frame, uh, we can save these notes out. So one of the easiest way to save them out is uh, as a PDF. And, or we can just save individual frames out. There are, there are a number of options, but if you wanted to save a PDF out, then you just save notes and annotations, and that will generate a PDF that gives you uh, every drawing that we've made, every comment that we've created uh, in a way that's really simple to export and, and pass around. So, and the PDF can be modified to allow for just a small thumbnail with the text next to it, or like this with the large, large image with, um, with any notes added as well. Uh, and you can see there's also a, um, uh, an indication on there that the, um, uh, what, what frame number we're talking about. So uh, it's everything is frame accurate and everything is, is very uh, clear and, and easy to understand. Um, Within the review itself, uh, the owner has a, a bit of control over what um, guests can do. So if you are running large reviews and we're finding during COVID at the moment that um, uh, that we're seeing some very large reviews compared to what we were seeing six months ago, uh, sometimes it's important to, to be able to control what um, guests can do. And just sometimes be able to just have the owner present and not have guests uh, interacting or, or, or moving around. So the owner can turn off um, the ability of guests to run the uh, uh, transport controls. So here we can see the um, the guest is being disabled, so they can't play or or move around, but the owner still can. So the owner can basically use this as a as a purely as a presentation tool rather than an interactive tool. Um, we can also turn off the ability of guests to draw. So you might let them still be able to run the transport, but turn the drawings off. Uh, and again, it's just a way of sometimes um, clearing up large reviews so that you're not held up by people um, uh, getting bored and playing around on the edges. Uh, and of course, that, as soon as that's turned back on again, it means that everyone is fully uh, interactive again. Um, some of the basic uh, annotation tools that we have on here. Uh, obviously we have drawing tools. Uh, we also have um, arrows, uh, we have circles, we have um, a, a basic uh, on-screen uh, text box tool. And, you know, it's just a, a quick and simple tool to be able to uh, draw on the screen and, and make comments. Um, we can uh, actually uh, link an arrow to the text box. So if you wanted the text box to, to point at something specifically on screen, uh, if you draw an arrow uh, from the text box out, um, now that is gonna be joined in. So you can move the text box around and the arrow is still pointing to the section you want it to be at, um, which is a, a handy thing to do if you need that. Um, some of the other little uh, arrow tools that uh, people may not know about, um, and it might be worth switching to a different frame there, Neil. But 
you can use uh, modify keys um, to change the direction of the arrow. So that's using the, uh, the option key. Um, if you use option and shift, you can change the, um, the curve on the arrow, which is not a massive feature, but it's, it's handy. Um, and, and one of the Easter eggs that we added for a customer, oh, I think we're going back to 2006, 2007, um, is the ability to draw, <laughs> draw arrows through people's heads. So this is uh, using the, uh, the command key uh, while you're drawing the arrow. There you go. So yeah, it's just a bit of, bit of fun, but that's an Easter egg that's been in there for a long time um, that, we, that we sometimes forget about as well. Um, so some of the other uh, tools, you can change your brush sizes. Um, so the quickest way of doing that is with the square, um, the square brackets um, on your keyboard. Uh, it's, it's in the view menu as well, but if you use the square brackets, you can quickly uh, size your brushes up and down. Uh, and that also applies to the arrows and, and other tools as well. Um, some of the other uh, keyboard shortcuts, and there's actually quite an extensive list of keyboard shortcuts, which is in our manual. Uh, and we can send you uh, links to that as well if you, if you contact us afterwards. But um, some of the, the useful ones are things like uh, being able to jump from markers to markers. Uh, so if you use uh, on a Mac, it's, uh, it's command cursor to jump between different markers. I think on a PC, it's, it's control cursor. Uh, and also, uh, if we had more than one movie in this playlist, the um, uh, up and down arrows uh, using uh, on a Mac, it's, uh, it's function up and down. So it's basically the page up, page down. Uh, but on a, on a Mac, they've lost those buttons ages ago. So you can use the function uh, arrow up and down keys to go through the playlist. Uh, and once we, we're going to add some more clips soon and we'll be able to show you that as well. Um, but it's worth having a look through the uh, CineSync uh, manual, uh, which is on our website. Uh, and it has a lot of these uh, shortcuts and, and quick keys to be able to um, run some, uh, some interesting tools within CineSync uh, quickly without having to go through the menus to do it. Uh, and we can talk about some of those as we keep going through as well. But um, moving on, um, I'm going to talk some more about some of the CineSync Pro features. And if you have a CineSync Pro account, uh, which is a separate account but uses the same client, uh, these are the kind of tools that you'll have access to. So um, CineSync Pro is one of the uh, is is the tool that you'll need to be able to uh, run some of more our more uh, advanced features, including. Um, playback of uh, frame sequences, but probably to, to best illustrate what CineSync uh, Pro can do for you is uh, the integrations that we have with various tools. So we're going to start this with a, um, our integration with F-Track. Now it also integrates with Shotgun, it integrates with uh, uh, NIM, and you can see that in our integrations menu, but we're going to um, go through the F-Track integration today um, as an example of how this works. So this is in a new session and we are using the integration to do a few things. Now, as you know, with CineSync, you need to, um, everyone in, in the session has to have the same media. Um, that, that means that the media can be passed around in advance. Uh, you can send it via whatever tools that you normally do to send files around. Uh, but within our, with our integrations, you can also use um, CineSync um, to transfer the media to the guest as well. So with our integration with F-Track, we can log in and we can see live everything that's available to us in F-Track for review. So we start with a view of the uh, project window and within projects, we can then drill down and we can see uh, all of our versions that are available for review uh, and they can be listed as either playlists or um, in, in lists, but we can look at the versions individually and then we can drill down into the versions themselves and we can see uh, any notes that have been made on that version in the past uh, and any other information associated with that clip. And any of those versions, we can then add into a review. Now, the way this is configured at the moment, uh, this is using our um, AWS storage or F-Tracks AWS storage. So that means that any files that we add to the review are also then available to the guests to pull down. 
And when the guests join, they will pull these files in automatically from F-Track. So that means you don't have to transfer the files in advance. You can actually do this as part of the review um, and know that the guests are gonna get the files um, without having to do any work to find them. So once they're in the review, again, it becomes a fully interactive uh, review, um, notes, comments, the same as you do normally. Um, and it's all still using video that has been downloaded locally. So you still have access to your full system resources to play files back. So you can be, you know, you can use this with quite large video. You have the option of pulling down either F-Tracks um, transcoded video, or you can pull down the original files. Uh, so if you wanted to look at original 4K media, you can do that as well. Uh, which again, if you're looking at that in a, in a browser-based review system, you may struggle with bandwidth or with uh, the ability of tools to cope with that kind of um, uh, resolution. But in CineSync, it's all very simple. So within the review, we can uh, yeah make our comments, make our drawings, uh, point things out that we need to discuss. And then at the end of the review, rather than just saving this out to a PDF like we would with uh, basic CineSync, uh, we can export our notes and comments back to F-Track, which means that they're all recorded within the, uh, the F-Track database. So when we, when we export back, the first thing we'll see is a preview window and that will show us all of our drawings that we've made, any comments that we've made. It allows us to um, edit or to um, add extra comments. So if we haven't, you know, correctly captured what we wanted to say, or if we've made spelling mistakes, um, or if we've made a, a comment that we don't like and we'd like to remove, um, all of that can be cleaned up before we export. Um, we can choose to either export this as a new note, or we can merge it with an existing note. So if there is uh, comments we've made in the past and we want to keep it all together in one uh, in one place in F-Track, um, we can do that. Uh, and we can also choose to um, update the approval status on it. So whether it's work in progress or pending or, or approved, uh, we can set that as part of this process too. So once we've, once we've set up what we want it to look like and we've previewed it and we know exactly how it's going to look when it ends up in F-Track, uh, we can then export this back to F-Track and make it available to everyone. So, and that's an immediate thing. So that will immediately update in F-Track. And if we pull up F-Track itself, um, we will see that those uh, comments have been uh, imported immediately. So we can see the drawings that we've made, the, the, um, any comments that we've made. And again, the, the frame references are all there. The, uh, uh, and, it's, and it's corrected, it's, it's recorded against the correct version in F-Track as well. So you'll see it in the playlist view and you'll see it in the, uh, against the, uh, the, the version itself. So, it's a very quick way of being able to ensure that all of our notes and comments that we've made during the review are captured correctly and uh, and can be found later on. So it's a it's a very uh, close integration. I mean, essentially, we we have an F-Track um, version installed inside CineSync, so it it makes it very powerful uh, and and very quick to to manage these things. Um, the other option, uh, well, well, another option for moving files around in um, in CineSync is to instead of using the F-Track integration, uh, we can use uh, you can use your own SFTP site. So, if um, within the playlist view, uh, you can uh, bring up your uh, transfer tools, and you can choose to um, you can configure any. Um, uh, site that you want to do this through. So if we have an SFTP site that we have um, configured, that means that you can, uh, again, upload to your own SFTP site and have guests pull down from that. They'll have to enter in their, their username and password to access the site, but it's a, it's a very simple way of being able to move uh, a lot of files around at once. Um, if you don't have access to it to uh, F-Track or Shotgun or NIM or one of those um, tracking tools, then um, SFTP works well as well. And uh, yeah, and we have other options for, for doing this too. So um, again, it's something we can talk about further if you if you want to discuss it. Um, so okay, so some of the main features that we have in Pro uh, over and above our integrations, and some of the features that you don't have access to in in Basic CineSync include things like um, color controls. 
So this is a way of being able to really quickly show someone um, the, uh, you know, what you mean. If, you, if you're talking about like this, this image is too dark or this image is too red, uh, it's a hard thing to describe to someone. But if you just want to show them, this is exactly what I want to do. You know, I want to, I want to make, I want to warm this up. I want to cool this down. I want to make it look like it's nighttime. Um, it's the kind of thing that you can do really quickly with with color tools. Um, so we have we have basically brightness and and red, green, blue manipulation. Um, we have saturation, gamma, um, and, uh, and and a hue um, control. So that allows you to cycle through different colors. Uh, and we've had customers have used that, particularly uh, Marvel shows. Um, they use the hue tool to um, uh, to audition specific colors for, sp for specific characters because every Marvel character has to have their own uh, specific color on screen. Um, you know, whether if they if they have lightning coming out, it can be green or it can be blue or it can be yellow, but it has to be specific per character. So they will use the hue tool to to audition things quickly, and because everyone's seeing exactly what's happening. Uh, it makes the uh, the ability to um, uh, communicate these things really clear, and it means you can make decisions about color um, within a large group, even if everyone's working remotely, uh, in a very um, clear, concise way. Uh, some of the other tools that we have in here are um, the ability to control um, your masking. So if you want to see this um, in, uh, in a different format, if you want to see how it's going to look when it's in a 16.9 uh, version, um, whether it's going to, you know, what it looks like in, in widescreen for cinema. Um, and you can audition things like, you know, uh, title safe areas for uh, subtitling and, and that kind of stuff. Again, very clearly for everyone in the, uh, in the review. Uh, we have, yeah, again, so there you go. So you can, you, can, you can pick out versions if you want to zoom into a specific shot or show how you want to reframe things. Again, you can audition that very quickly. Uh, we have a zoom tool that allows you to zoom in on specific elements on the screen. Um, and you can pan around in that view as well. So again, really useful for high resolution uh, shots. Um, we have a... Uh, if we've got another, all the other files loaded, we've got a compare mode that allows you to compare between uh, different different shots within the same um, or different versions of a shot. So in this one, we're going to we're going to load two different shots uh, from the same um, uh, movie, uh, but you can see how compare mode works with the two shots side by side. So we can run this as a as a as a side by side comparison, or we can run it in a uh, overlay mode. And uh, so if we had uh, two versions that were only subtly different, you know, this is a quick way of being able to see where the differences are uh, and to see what's been changed. So it's a handy, a handy tool. Uh, aligned with uh, compare mode, one of the tools that we built years ago, which we had a lot more use years ago, but it's starting to come back now, we're starting to see a, a resurgence uh, is 3D. So being able to play um, uh, stereo movies. So again, this is a, um, a stereo movie with the encoded uh, left eye, right eye, side by side. Uh, we can handle um, a, a top bottom view, a left right view, uh, and we can output this to any 3D uh, viewer that you like. So that can be um, a basic anaglyph, so red, red green glasses. Uh, it could be a checkerboard, it could be um, you know, uh, interlaced, basically whatever um, output format you're using, uh, we can support. So we have had a number of um, productions over the years using using CineSync to uh, audition 3D, uh, to be able to make comments on it in, in a 3D mode and to be able to view it in a theater at both ends uh, and, and see it in 3D. Uh, and we can we can do things like uh, you know the annotations can be uh, we can adjust the depth on annotations to make sure that they don't cross through uh, anything that's coming out of the screen, and um, yeah, it's just a very simple uh, but easy to use three um, D uh, visualization tool. Uh, what else have we got in Pro Neil? We have the ability to uh, play 
more than one uh, clip in a row. So if you were, particularly in visual effects, but in an increasingly in a number of different areas, uh, we need to be able to look at um, clips in sequence and to be able to look at context cuts. And you can do that simply in CineSync by uh, creating a sequence out of um, two or more clips. So Neil here is selecting two clips. Uh, he can um, uh, choose to uh, make a sequence out of them. We name the sequence. And then that sequence is added to the playlist as a, a separate clip. And now we have two sequences, uh, sorry, two clips that are running end to end. So um, we can play them back to, and forth for each other. Uh, if there are handles on the images, we can adjust the handles. So uh, if you have slates, they can be removed automatically. Um, you can adjust handles individually or, or across the entire group. Um, and yeah, so here we have um, incoming and outgoing handles that we can adjust. Um, and we can also change the order of clips in a sequence. So at the moment, the, the mountains are first and the girls second, uh, but we can reorder it the other way around. So that uh, you can basically do quick assemblies within this view. It's not an editor, but it's a way of being able to look at, at, at clips in sequence and be able to swap out different versions within that sequence and um, and see the incoming and the outgoing in, in proper context. Because that's really the main point of CineSync is to be able to look at files in context with other people. Uh, and when you're discussing the media in front of you, you're seeing it with the full understanding of how that, uh, how that looks, but also how it interacts with the other clips that are around it. So uh, the sequence playback is a really uh, useful tool for doing that. Uh, and the last, uh, last couple of features that we have, which are quick ones, um, is the ability to uh, flip a shot or to flop it. Uh, I always get confused as to which one's which, but um, you, can, you can reverse, you can turn shots upside down. Uh, apparently the entire opening of Gravity was originally um, filmed the other way up. Uh, until it was uh, until it was flipped uh, in a review situation like this, um, and I think it was accidental the first time they did it, and they decided to keep it. So it's it's a good example of how uh, reviewing within um, a collaborative environment and allowing people to interact with files can actually change the way that that movies uh, evolve. It allows for kind of that creative conversation. Uh, and the other tool that we have um, that you can play with is. Uh, being able to uh, loop certain um, parts of a shot. So we can set in and out points. Um, I think it's just the, the I and O shortcut. Is that right, Neil? What's, what's the shortcut for, um, for in and out? I forget. Anyway, I think it's, uh, it's, it's uh, you, can, you can hit uh, I, uh, yes, it is. So I and O. To, um, to hit your in and out points. And once you've selected your in and out points, you can then loop um, in that section. Um, so you can uh, see a specific section uh, played end to end without having to play the whole shot. Um, so that's the main additional features within CineSync Pro. Uh, other than one of the things we haven't shown you yet is as part of this whole uh, review, and because we've been sending the files around through F-Track uh, or via SFTP, um, it means that we have sent um, original files to guests in the review. Now, one of the dangers in sending files around for review, obviously, is that that file ends up on someone else's computer. And we need a way of being able to control, the, um, control that media so that it doesn't uh, get out into the wide world. And if you're working on films that have a very um, high level of confidentiality, um, you know, where you, you're working on media that you don't want to share with um, anyone outside of your direct control, uh, we have some, uh, we have the ability to, um, to lock that media down. So the files that have been sent around for this review um, to the guests have been uh, encrypted. And you can see in the file system here, um, that the files are not named. They, they're, they're, not, they're not called Star Wars 1. Uh, they are uh, they're given a, a random um, alphanumeric um, title. So even if someone was to find it in their, in their file viewer, 
uh, it, it doesn't look obviously like uh, the media. And if they were to try and open that file um, in anything other than CineSync, then it will show up as an invalid file. So this is an option that we have within um, all of our integrations. Um, if you're sending files around using the integration, you can uh, encrypt the media. So it's encrypted in transit and it's encrypted when it remains, when it's on disk. So during the review, the file is encrypted on disk. It's decrypted into memory just for the CineSync review and only with the owner of that media because the session key that the guest has joined forms part of uh, the uh, encryption key and session keys are unique per session. So even if they tried to open this with CineSync themselves, it wouldn't work. It's only valid for this for this session with this owner. Um, and the other thing that we can set within our CineSync um, uh, preferences uh, within the within within the integration is the ability to automatically delete files at the end of the review. So if you don't want people to keep the media, or let's say they're reviewing on a mobile phone because uh, we have a CineSync app for iOS. Uh, you want to be able to clear those files off automatically at the end of the review so that um, it's not taking up space and so that they're not um, uh, staying out of your control. So at the end of the review, we have chosen to delete files and you'll see that as the guest leaves, those files are deleted um, off the machine. And that's an automatic process. And as soon as uh, the session closes, those files are gone. So. It means that for this review, we've been able to automatically send files out to everyone in the review. They've been able to view files at full resolution um, and, and use their local system resources to play it back. So we're seeing files at full speed, uh, full frame rate, no, no dropping of frames, no lag, no um, tearing, none of the issues you'd normally see with screen sharing, but they haven't had to manage that process themselves as a guest. They've been able to uh, have that all set up for them but from the owner's point of view, they're comfortable with the fact that the files uh, are encrypted in transit, encrypted on disk and are deleted at the end of the review. So there's nothing left behind for uh, someone else to stumble across in the future. So it's a, it's a fairly simple um, but comprehensive secure review solution and it's available uh, with uh, CineSync Pro at any time. None of these things need to be installed or added. Uh, it all ships as part of the product. Uh, so in terms of things that are coming up, the major feature which um, we can't show you today but which we will be able to show fairly soon um, is within the color tools we will be adding um, support for OCIO which is the open color IO standard um, from the Academy Software Foundation. And that uh, gives us a lot more control over being able to, um, to add um, really detailed color information and in a completely standardized form. Uh, and again, that's something that's gonna be able to be shared between the owner and the guests uh, so that anything the owner does will be seen at the guest's end. So you could have uh, you know, a number of LUTs applied, you could have you know, the, 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 the correct color space. And if you're using a, uh, a format, say uh, EXRs, uh, where you have a known color space, it means you can apply um, uh, transforms over the top that are gonna be accurate at, at all ends. Um, and, and again, being able to, to share that in, in context and be able to know that the guest is seeing exactly what you're seeing uh, and within a standard um, color space. So that's coming up um, soon. Uh, we will have a beta out of that uh, fairly soon. Uh, it would have been sooner, but OCIO has just been updated to version two. So we um, are incorporating that now and we'll be able to show you what we've got um, in the next few weeks. Um, I'm going to take back control on this in a sec and just show you one of the other features with CineSync, which not everyone has uh, seen before, uh, which is you can, um, uh, you have some control over your sessions in CineSync. So this is being able to create uh, your own um, session keys. So the, the little, the, the, the prefix before that, uh, that you use to join sessions, uh, it's being able to add additional logins in CineSync um, and it's, um, 
uh, and, uh, and other tools. I will bring this up for you now. Okay. So we are now looking at the, the CineSync uh, admin interface. So you can get to this from uh, the Perspective website. You just go to perspective.com. Uh, there's a login in the top right hand box, uh, top right hand corner. Uh, and then you can use this to log into your CineSync account. So within here, uh, obviously you can see all the logins that are associated with this account. You can have more than one login. One of the reasons for doing that, um, particularly on, on larger shows is that you can give a, uh, a particular user a login. Um, and then when that user is, is no longer on the show, you can get rid of it. So th it means that that user can no longer use your account um, and they don't have to have access to the, uh, to the main login details. Um, and it's just as easy as saying, add a new login and fill it in and then that user is created. So that's a, um, it's a, a simple way of being able to manage your users on a show. Uh, you can update your account details. So uh, that's billing details. That's your admin contact details. Uh, you can change your password. You can change your prefix. So uh, I have the prefix of sync, um, but I can change that to, uh, to any other prefix that I want. So uh, if you want to change it to your company name or if you want to change it to uh, the show that you're on, um, rather than having just a random assigned prefix, you can have one that identifies you. Uh, and then it still has the, the randomized um, session key following it. Um, and another tool uh, which is handy um, and is not going to show you much right now, but this is the active sessions um, portal. So if you have the situation where you find that someone has left a sync session open and it's blocking you from being able to um, start a new session, or if you have a lot of people who have used it and have left it open and so your Sinisync Pro account is full, you can go into this view and you can see all the active sessions. And if there are sessions that just have a single person that they've been running for ages, uh, you can kill those sessions and that clears them off the server immediately. Uh, it makes your, uh, it clears up your Sinisync account so that you'll be able to start a new session right away. Uh, so that's a, a handy tool on the, on the odd occasion where you, might find yourself locked out. You can always come into here, clean your account up and start a new session right away. Uh, and the other thing you can do through this uh, interface is, is renewing your account. So if you need to renew for any reason, uh, you can always do it directly through here. So that is, um, That is our webinar. Um, we are happy to answer any questions that uh, that you have sent through. Uh, I can see there's one question here about being able to find a recording of the session. Um, uh, we are recording all these webinars that we're doing with F-Track and CineSync, um, so we can make them available to you afterwards, uh, and we'll be in contact uh, with that at the end of this um, at the end of this session. Um, if you have any questions for us, you are more than welcome to contact us. The easiest um, uh, email is support at cinesync.com. And um, that goes to everyone uh, at this end of the company. So Neil and I are both on that, uh, as well as our whole support team. Um, so yeah, support at cinesync.com for any questions uh, or anything you'd like to follow up. And uh, and if you've got questions about pricing or anything else, we can always um, answer those through there as well. Um, so there's another question here about um, about file transfers um, outside of um, uh, our integrations with F-Track, Shotgun, NIM, uh, or SFTP. Um, so there, you will find that there are. Um, uh, I mean, there are situations where people will uh, not have access to those tools. Um, basically, CineSync is able to connect any copies of the same media in any location, um, regardless of how they got there. So if you send your files around via WeTransfer or Dropbox or any other tools, um, CineSync just needs to be pointed 
to the right file and it will find them, sync them up. So you don't need to use one of our integrations to move files around. You can uh, do it yourself. Uh, we just find the integrations are a, a simple way of managing it. So if you have access to one of those project tracking tools or to your own SCTP site, then uh, it makes it simpler, uh, particularly for the guests, because there's, there's no requirement on the guest to handle the file um, transfer component. Uh, it makes it closer to, um, uh, you know, a screen sharing uh, style review, uh, but ensuring the quality. Um, so it doesn't look like we have any other questions at the moment. So I think we're, we'll probably wrap this up uh, now. Uh, please uh, feel free to check back in with us with our future webinars. Uh, we have uh, a good one coming up about creative, collabor creative collaboration. So we were doing that with uh, a bunch of um, uh, industry uh, luminaries uh, who will discuss about uh, you know the way that they uh, are doing reviews, the way that they're tracking projects, the way that they're managing um, uh, the, the whole workflow of their post-production on, on various tools. And particularly in the last um, six months, we've seen remote collaboration take on a, a new urgency. Um, as we've seen teams that were reviewing in the same room and now reviewing uh, across, you know, multiple uh, homes, uh, bedrooms, uh, boardrooms, you know, it's, it's been a real challenge for everyone. So that's going to be a really great um, session. So if you have a chance to do that um, later this month, um, I encourage you to enjoy it, uh, to, to join us. Uh, but otherwise, thanks for your time today. I appreciate everyone um, uh, joining and, 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 uh, going through anything with us uh, as i said if you if you have any questions or you'd like to follow up um please let us know and um uh, support at cinesync.com will get to all of us and um we'll leave it there so thanks again and um we will talk to you soon thanks thank you